Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, again, John, a warm welcome to you. Ask yourself this question privately. How many of you, like me, when it really comes down to it, <coughs> it's work on your body language when you're speaking? We're all comfortable with ourselves and the way that we speak. But the problem is that body language is 55% of the communicated message. It's over half the communicated message, but yet all of us, including myself at times, take it for granted. Your body language should mirror what you're saying. It should agree with what you're saying. And if it doesn't, you're going to believe the body language before you believe what you listen and hear with your ears. You want to be open with your body language. Invite people to come in. Let's take a look at the basics of body language and review them this morning. Posture. If you're down and like this and down and out, the world is on your shoulders. You're stressed out. You've had a rough day. What kind of impression are you going to make when you're out standing up in front of a group of people and talking? Pretty obvious, isn't it? It's going to be negative. But if you're standing tall, perhaps one inch taller than what you normally are, you look confident, you look secure, you look positive, you're in command, and at the same time, something very great happens. You're able to breathe from your diaphragm area. The air pushes from the diaphragm up through your, your mechanism for your voices, and with a relaxed voice coming out, it will resonate the way it is intended. When I move from one area to the other, what do your eyes do? They follow me, don't they? Now that's good, and then again, it could be bad, depending on what you do. If you work the platform, moving from area to area, and have it planned out like a performer does on stage, then it is a very positive thing, because you can choreograph what you're doing and where you are at that particular time. But by the same token, if you're weaving back and forth, if you're pacing back and forth, and I'm in front of the camera, so I'm not going to do it, but you know what I'm talking about. And if you're doing other distracting things, then you're taking away from your speaking because the attention is now drawn on the distracting things and away from your message. Put each foot below its respective hip. Equally distributed with your weight, and you're now solid from the waist down. You can then move around, talk to anyone that you want to, and it eliminates all those distracting, weaving in and out, pacing back and forth movements. Eye contact. Talk to someone for 5 to 15 seconds in the audience. The people around them will think you're talking to them too. It's easier to talk to one person than it is a group of people. It's like talking to someone at the water fountain. So talk for 5, 15 seconds to one person, and then move on and talk to someone else for another 5 to 15 seconds. In doing so, you build a bond between you and your audience. Now, the eyes are a two-way street, folks. Not only are you engaging and bonding with the people in your audience, but also you're getting feedback with your eyes on how you're accomplishing your speech. Are they engaged? Are they listening to what you're saying? Are they checking their watch? Are they looking at their palm pilot? And if so, what do you need to do to adjust <coughs> to draw their attention back in? By far the most dominant thing, the most dominant thing that we have in body language is our face. Your face should reflect your feelings, your emotions, your attitudes, what is actually going on up here in your brain. And when it does, it supports and amplifies exactly what you're trying to communicate and what you're trying to get across. If your face betrays what you're saying, hey Luigi, how you doing today? Oh boss, I just feel like I'm on top of the world today. <laughs> what do you believe? Do you believe the face or do you believe the voice and the words? I used to have a warehouse manager that would do that to me. Later on, I'd find out what was troubling me. 
The face is dominant. We want to key in on the face, key in on the features. And the most wonderful thing about the face is it will tell you what's truly going on. How many times have you been asked to, uh, to smile for a picture? <laughs> Look at the pictures and see which ones are forced camera smiles and which of them are true smiles. The smile originates in the brain first and then transforms into the complete face. If you look at the eyes, if the eyes are smiling, chances are excellent. It's a real smile. Now, the one that we all like to talk about, gesturing. We all want to gesture, or we don't want to gesture. My first speech, this was my practice in front of my wife. After a minute, she says, stop it! I said, okay. That's not the way you gesture. And that's where I started to learn how to gesture when my wife yelled at me and told me to stop. What we want to do with gesturing is we want to support, we want to amplify, we want to characterize and illustrate what we're speaking about. This is an important point. Let's take a look at some of the good gesturing and some of the no-nos. How about the no-nos first? The old fig leaf, better known as the cover-up. <laughs> okay, guys, hands in the pocket. All right, John, what you got in the pocket today? Hands behind the back. John, what you got, 38? <laughs> Confrontational, hands on the hips. What do you mean you don't agree with what I'm talking about today? Meet you outside in the park. <laughs> arms folded you can't come into my world it's my world and I'm not going to let you in for the ladies that have long hair that keeps getting in their face how many times do you see this as they're talking get a bobby pin anything <laughs> to get rid of this it is so distracting and the guys want to look at how pretty you are anyway let's take a look at some of the good gesturing that we can do. Palms down or palms out like this. We're pushing away. Don't let that dog get near me now. I'm afraid of dogs. Palms up. Uplifting. It was this heavy. I could hardly lift it. I'm open. Come into my world. I'd love to have you. Come into my world. I have nothing to hide. I want to make a point, and this is what it is, not this. Vertical, making another point. You two vertical palms, we're making size. I caught a fish this big yesterday. Was it really this big, John? With the fingers. Another thing we can do is count. The first thing I want to talk about is this. The second thing I want to talk about is this. And the third thing I want to talk about is this. This morning, we've talked a little bit about the basics of body language. I know the things that I would like to work on. I'm going to work on them one at a time. It takes about three to four weeks before it becomes habit because we have to get out of the comfortable feeling that we have with our bad habits, become uncomfortable for a while until it becomes it's like the I, er, and you know. We first realize that we are saying it. Then, <laughs> after we realize that we say it, then what do we do? The light bulb goes off as we get ready to say it. And then we prevent ourselves from saying it. And it's the same way with body language. Break the habit. And when you do, then you will become more confident and the way your body language is, it'll be more expressive, it'll be more descriptive, it will, it will illustrate better what you're trying to say as well as support and amplify it. I know what I'm going to work on next. I hope you will consider some things you might like to work on too. Mr. Tupac.